Today I'm going to go in depth on Adobe Photoshop's new generative fill feature to show you how it works and some of the uses you have for it when using Adobe Photoshop. Now you're going to need Photoshop beta. So you're going to want to find your Adobe Creative Cloud app, open that up, make sure you're on the apps tab, come down to beta apps and you'll notice there's Photoshop over here. And all you need to do is actually install and make sure it's up to date to access this. So I've opened Photoshop beta and the way I get this to work is I grab my selection tool, place it where I want and I'm going to put a temple on the water here. I can have any kind of shape selection but I can get really specific if I want to but essentially I want to select the sky and the water because the water, I want, I want the reflection of the temple to be there. So what I'm actually going to do now that I've got my selection I get this generative fill button. If I click on that, type in, I type in what I want, which is a temple built on the land next to the water. And I want to be specific, so I get exactly what I want. And I click generate. Depending on the resolution of your image, it can take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. But what I get is some pretty interesting results. I can scroll through, select the temple that I want. This one's probably the best, but to be honest, I'm not happy with any of them. So what I can do is go back into my prompt. I can just hit generate to get some more options like this and scroll through again. Some of these are cool, but I want something looking a little more ancient. So I can go back into here and type in an ancient temple built on the land next to the water. And I hit generate again. So now I get something that's closer to what I wanted. I can scroll through and choose the best one. I'd say the first one is probably my favorite. So I can run with that. But what's really cool is it's actually created a new layer. If I come over here, to my layers palette. You see I have generative layer one. I can rename that as I see fit. And also I have a mask, but you'll notice if I disable the mask and remove the background, it's actually produced a full image. So when I reintroduce the mask, it's cropped off. So what's really interesting about this is every time you generate, it does actually generate a full image. So another reason to pay attention to your resolution, but it's also a layer you can turn on or off I can adjust the mask if I want to by clicking on the mask. I can draw some black right through the middle if I want to turn it off. So it's actually very easy to go in and edit this if you have existing Photoshop skills, which by the way, I still recommend having even if you're doing AI generative fill or AI art using say Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion, these skills are actually really handy to have. But what's also cool is with this layer selected, if I click on the actual generative layer portion, and scroll down, I have all of these options. All the options I generated are here. And I can continue to adjust. So up here I have my prompt. So I can say ancient mythical temple built on the water on fire. And click generate and I can then continue to create more results. Again, I have my selections and they're not great. But it doesn't matter because I can come back to my panel and go back to the one that I really liked which is this one, and just keep it there and use that. So it's pretty easy to get some cool results with this. One thing I will say though, if you're looking at creating very sort of fantastical art, this is not great, but it is excellent for photo editing and just going a little bit outside the realm of reality. One example is again, now I can just continue to add objects, like maybe I wanna add a spaceship up the top. I'm gonna to add some selection down the bottom here. So that way, if it needs to have a reflection, it can put that in there. Choose my spaceship. I really like that one, so I'm gonna stick with that. If I want to, I can add in more ships flying in the sky. And then to take it a step further, I can then select something in the water here, an old boat floating in the foreground. I select the boat that works the best. That one's probably the best. Although I'm not quite happy with it, so I'm gonna say. So you can very quickly see how you can populate an image very, very easily with generative AI. Now this, is not great and again if I were doing this seriously I would probably edit out some of the blues and things like that if I really wanted to nail this image because it's like I said fantastical images it doesn't do great with but it does work to a degree and of course I can also just add an adjustment layer over the top to finalize it such as a color lookup as a way of kind of bringing that all together and muting it so you can still do all your normal Photoshop editing capabilities as well but you can see our generated image on the left compared to the right, it's done a pretty good job. It adds reflections, uh, it produces a, a whole bunch of different things. But one thing I have noticed is we have this ship here. It's actually, a, I don't know if it's a reflection or 
part of the original layer but it is a bit of a strange add-on but i'm sure it's something easily enough to remove if you really wanted to but moving on there's a few more tricks you can use this for for instance i've got a new image here 1024 by 1024 create and it's completely blank but if i hit Control a type generative fill and give it a prompt a busy cyberpunk city from the future cinematic lifelike shot with a dslr camera 35 mil film generate you can see it's produced a, a city here quality is not the best uh, you're still better off using probably uh, AI art generator like Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion, Leonardo AI, something like that, to get better results than what I have here. But you can see how you can actually work to get some really cool results. But it is better at, like I said, focused areas. But before we actually get into this, what I can also do is delete this layer altogether. And if I hit Control A, I'm going to unlock this layer, empty it out. I don't, if I hit generative fill and leave this blank, it'll actually still generate images. I click generate and it'll just produce random images. And I think this is really cool because uh, it shows that it does actually produce something. So that's just a bit of fun, something I thought you might find interesting. Now from a photo editing perspective, I have this image I got from Pexels here. Uh, there's actually a lot more I can also do with this. One thing I can do is I can actually hit my crop tool and create some space around the image. Now I'm actually gonna compare content aware fill to the AI generative. So I just hit enter. Now to generate using AI generative, I'm gonna actually just select and get into the layer a little bit. So it has a little, re little bit of reference come up and I don't even have to type anything. I'm just gonna hit generative fill, generate, and it's extended the scene for me. I can scroll through and pick which one I think looks best. Probably the second one. And it uses AI to actually generate the background. And so it's a bit, again, if I decide I want to use the crop tool here to extend, and I use content aware, hit enter. This is the result content aware gives us. If I switch to the ladder underneath and use generative fill, we get this. So you can see by switching back and forth, content aware seems to just patternize and repeat the content but generative fill produces more original content. And keep in mind, this is a big image, 7,000 uh, 7, pixels wide by 6,000 pixels tall. So when I zoom in on the edges, it hasn't actually produced it at full resolution. So that is worth noting. And I'm basically experimenting with this as I'm doing it, but it's good to know that it's there and working. But I'm gonna resize this image quickly. And as I said, we can then continue to edit this image the way we want. So if I want to, maybe I'll flatten this image. I'll go to select sky. I then go to generative fill and type in golden hour sky, hit generate. And it's given me some options for a different sky. It's even changed the mountain a little bit. Overall, that looks a bit weird. So I'm gonna say night sky. And we've got another few strange options there. This one doesn't look too bad. But something to consider is even though I have the option to select the sky, it is AI. So if I bin that, grab a rectangular tool and just select over the whole top and then type in night sky. Now it has integrated the trees with the night sky, but it's even altered the scene a little bit. So that looks a bit fantastical. Uh, this one I think probably looks the best. So I'm gonna run with that one for now and we can continue to make edits to this image. So now I'm gonna try and select around the car. Go to generative fill. I'm gonna type in water from the beach, a little bit of sand. And it's kind of converted it to sand, which I think is cool. So now we have this water here. The reflection of the car is actually in the water, which I think is really cool. I'm not 100% satisfied with this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate on top of it because now at least I have some reference. I'm gonna use my lasso tool to select the water, and then I'm gonna come out to here. Generative fill, I'm gonna type in blue water, blue clean water, and hit generate. Still not happy with these, so I'm gonna hit generate again. That's more what I'm after. So I recommend having a few goes at each one, experiment with how it lays out and change scenes in a way that you would if you were photo editing to get the best results with this tool. Now you can also remove objects. So if I simply get my tool and select the car all together, hit generative fill and leave it blank and hit generate, it will remove the car altogether. 
so you can actually use it to remove objects pretty effectively. But in this case, I wanna keep the car. And now I'm just gonna add in a bunch of objects. We're gonna quickly zoom ahead just to see what we can create by having a bit of fun with this tool. So you're gonna add in a few things like dinosaurs, play around with it a little bit, try and make it something really out there using primarily the AI generative fill. So just gonna populate the scene and see what we can actually make that looks decent. And then we got this original image we started off with, we've extended it, and then we've added in all this extra stuff, the sky, the dinosaurs, the water, all using AI generative fill and a few areas with some very basic editing techniques. But what about when we start editing photographs of people, which is actually quite difficult. Now, of course, if you wanna edit actual photos, we can also simply, I could start by say turning this off here, going to my generative fill, adding something like downtown streets, and it's created some streets that are actually fairly realistic. I'm gonna stick with this one for now. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. Um, so creating sort of objects that are not, you're not gonna pay a heap of attention to, it's obviously really good. But things like faces it can struggle with. So if I reintroduce this layout, what I'm actually gonna do now, what I think is cool, we've always had select subject, but we've got this remove background button. If I click that, it automatically removes the background and masks it for us. So we can go in and repair it if we need to and actually have a background there. Uh, it doesn't sort of look as organic as I'd like it to, but it's done a great job with the hair, things like that. But what if I wanna change this guy's face? I wanna show you some of the shortcomings, but how you can use it sort of in a better way to edit someone's face. If I select this guy's face, and I just do generative fill without actually typing anything, it'll produce a face, but there's, you know, the teeth are a bit funny. Some of these other faces, that actually has turned out better than I expected, to be honest. But uh, if I just said I wanted to go angry face, it does kind of mess it up a little bit. And if you zoom in, you can kind of see how things don't really work out. That one obviously is a bit out of whack, but uh, you can see how even with these ones here, there's some issues with some of the just bits and pieces. Even this one here, probably one of the best ones. The hair is fine and the mouth, but the eyes are just a bit funny. So. What I do recommend is it's not really gonna be great for altering faces overall, but you can do parts of someone's face. One thing I can do too is if I'm not happy with how this is blending into the background, I can select around the edges of my subject, including this bit here. Generative fill and just hit generate while it's blank. And although it changes some of the details, if I was to take the time to get closer to the edges, I could probably do something better. But it has blended him in a bit better. Some of these look a bit funny. The first one is by far the best. I'm gonna stick with that. But I can then also go through and change some things like I can say here, select his eyes, generative fill, blue eyes, generate. And because I kept it pretty tight, it's kept the eyes around the same size. He looks a little bit insane here. I'm gonna move this out of the way so we can see the face. Those are brown eyes. <laughs> but these eyes are probably the best. And then of course, if I want to, I can do things like select individual things. So I can say a fat nose and give him a fatter nose if I want to. So I can transform the face if I want to, but for the sake of this, I'm gonna get rid of this nose because I still want it to look kind of like the original guy. And I'm gonna sort of move this over here. What I can do, if you get sick of this moving in the way, you can pin the bar position. So now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna select his hair. I haven't selected all of it. I've missed a little bit down here, but we'll just leave that there for now. And I can give him blonde hair. And I get a few options of blonde hair I can work with. Some of them are a bit funky. This one's not too bad. I'm gonna generate again. I think that's probably the best one, that one there. So you can actually start to transform images. So if you've taken this guy from looking like this, with brown hair, brown eyes, blonde hair, blue eyes, and as a bit of an experiment, we can try adding some glasses. And this will alter the eyes probably. So let's say these are the glasses we wanna keep. Once again, I can always just click into the mask if I want to and try and just use black to remove what eyes were there. If I want to use the original eyes, although it does look a bit funny, but you sort of get the idea. It's actually, it's pretty handy for doing stuff like that. And you can even change the shape of the guy a bit. Muscular person wearing a shirt, hit generate. And you can see it's kind of filled him out a little bit. 
I don't know if this is the sort of thing you want to do, but uh, the options there, and you can see that you can actually do a, you can do subtle changes when you're not working with very obvious areas of the image, like the face, you can do portions of the face, smaller areas, you can do the background, and you can get some pretty good results when working in that capacity. So even though it has its issues, the way it handles lighting is uh, not bad. It can be a bit hit and miss, but if I select an area here and go to generative fill and I type in a woman walking on the road, hit generate. Although she's a bit big uh, compared to the car, it does produce the shadows in the right direction. And some of these other options uh, work as well, but uh, you can see how you're able to create these people. Now, the color grading is not quite right, but the shadowing and the way it references the rest of the image to produce that, I think is pretty impressive. So overall, I highly recommend checking out the generative fill. If you don't have the Creative Suite or Adobe Photoshop, there is a link in the description below. Otherwise, I've got more videos coming out on Firefly and some more Adobe AI stuff. So subscribe if you want more of that. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video. Hope to see you again soon.